Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll be discussing about microbial growth and kinetics in a broader manner. So already we have discussed about these in my two previous videos under biochemical and bioprocess engineering. So you can just give it a watch so that you get all the references right. So moving on with this video, so let's get started. So we'll talk about some of its dependencies and how it affects and how it does not. So we'll first talk about the effect of temperature on growth rate. So talking about microbial growth rate, previously we discussed about graphs, various sort of phases, and all of its uh, important properties. We even talked about monot kinetics and other transformations. So in this, that were all in sense of just growth. So we'll in this video we'll be talking about what are the factors that affect growth, and what are the more of its uh, Turned in, uh, data dependencies and other terms. So, talking about the first thing, which is the effect of temperature on growth rate. So, according to temperature, optima of growth organisms can be classified into three groups, as you can see. So, basically, bacteria can be classified into two groups, such as psychrophiles, where temperature is less than uh, 20 degrees Celsius, uh, mesophiles, where temperature is between 20. 250 degrees Celsius and thermophiles are some some sort of very rare bacterium which can survive even higher at 50 degrees. So talking about the effect of temperature and how it plays a role in the growth of microorganisms. So increase in temperature towards optimal growth temperature, the growth rate approximately doubles for every 10 degree rise, uh, 10 degree increase in temperature. So uh, increase in temperature towards the optimal, not more than the optimal, but towards the optimal, in, uh, yeah, favors the growth of microorganisms. So increase in temperature towards the optimal growth favors the growth of microorganisms. And also for, ev for every 10 degree rise towards the optimal temperature, or 10 degree rise uh, in temperature towards the optimal, favors the growth all right and the second point which says that the above the optimal temperature means the growth rate decreases and thermal death may occur so above the thermal uh, above the optimal uh, temperature which is provided uh, the growth rate ceases and it may lead to thermal death thermal death is the instant death caused due to high temperatures so moving on with this so we have uh, some more specific uh, specificities and some more terms so we talk about them so the net specific replication rate can be expressed as so this is the net specific uh, replication rate which is expressed as this in the for temperature is this so dn by dt equals to ur minus kd into n where n is the number of organisms or microorganisms so where in so for the temperature you need to remember something such as this thing which is the net specific application which is denoted by dn by dt equals to u dash r minus u dash d into n so also at high temperatures the thermal death rate exceeds the growth rate so thermal death rate will definitely increase due to uh, increase in temperature top of the off level also, this causes a net decrease in the concentration of viable cells. This is very obvious as temperature increases and cells cannot withstand high temperatures will lead to death of cells. So the number of viable or like cells decreases. And also these three terms you need to remember which are very simple are correlating with this. So yeah, as you can see the, the you know, dn by dt term, the, op, uh, the upper term, uh, which denotes, which, is, which can be simply expressed as so in the RNS equation, K is expressed as K into E to the power of minus E A, which is activation energy by RT, whereas UR is denoted by uh, AE to the power of EA by RT, whereas KD is denoted by AE to the power of e ED by RT. So we got all of the terms which are present here. So net application T in case of temperature is denoted by this term. And all of its uh, explanation is given by these three uh, terms, as you can see, KD, UR, and simply K. So this is for any uh, by R any equation. This is the rate of replication, as we know, your mu R. Uh, sorry, I spelled it UR. It's mu R, and KD is the uh, death rate. So talking about also E and ED in case for 
replication rate of replication rate of death we see ea here we see ed here which are the activation energies for growth and thermal death this is for growth the replication is for growth and this is for thermal death also activation energy growth is like 10 to 20 kilocalories per mole and this is the activation energy required for growth is 10 to 20 kilocalories per mole and thermal death requires much more energy which is around 60 to 80 kilocalories per mole moving on with this we have some more things such as the effect of temperature as you can see so increase in temperature as you can see like this is the growth of constant and this is the temperature by d so this is k basically the which is which is given by the rna equation so we will just read this thing what it's written so rna's plot of growth rate of e coli individual data points are marked with corresponding degree celsius so these are all the temperatures marked here as you can see so the temperature uh, so the growth occurs best at 39 degree celsius as you can see which is a optimal temperature which is an optimal temperature which is pretty much an optimal temperature as you can see at lower temperatures the growth is not that much feasible whereas at higher temperatures the growth decreases uh, extensively so at this optimal temperature the growth rate is maximum as you can see at higher temperatures it leads to fatality and at low temperatures it is same as the higher temperature so this is the simple growth uh, rate that i can show you from the uh, that is present in the internet so i got it from there so moving on from this so we have some more like effect of ph on growth rate so talking about effect of ph so which is the next dependency which is the effect of ph how the ph affects after temperature so we'll talk about some of its uh, different organism and different ph optima so we'll talk about some of its uh, range how on which ph it may survive so bacteria survives from ph 3 to 8 whereas yeast survives from 3 to 6 mold is from 3 to 7 and plant is from 5 to 6 and animal is from 6.5 to 7.5 so the ph is like more or less average from 4 to 7 so it uh, 4 to 7 uh, looks like an optimal ph so from this so we have another graph with the, uh, the effect of ph so this is the graph for effect of ph so there are cells which can adapt with ph and there are cells which cannot adapt with ph so there are two types of cells so we will talk about them so typical variation of specific growth rate with ph the units are arbitrary so with adaptations changes in ph is increased slowly without adaptations changes in ph increased very fast so with ph uh, with adaptations we'll talk about first as it's written so with uh, adaptations uh, the cells don't need or don't feel that the pH is changing very much rapidly as you can see the change in pH is increased slowly because the cells have adapted slowly and steadily with that and without adaptations it may lead to that uh, due to change in, in uh, pH increased very fast so we due to rapid increase in or change in pH uh, without adaptation it may cause to death or it is very difficult for survival so as you can see this is a simple long term and with adaptation it is very slowly so with adaptation it is shows a steep curve as you can see from here to down so from 5 to 8 it's not much a difference it's a difference of 3 ph so it takes time because it adapts and whereas we see from 3 to 9 without adaptations which is a difference of 6 ph causes very quickly and it may lead to fatality so in class so with adaptation uh, cells survive cells do survive and without adaptation cells it's difficult to survive cause due to rapid uh, changes in ph so moving on with this so we'll talk about the third factor which is the effect of dissolve oxygen on growth rate so oxygen is the rate limiting factor that we need to remember so it the oxygen can be rate limiting factor in various phases ways we'll talk about that so for now just uh, we need to understand that it's a rate limiting factor also talking about the sum of its points which are specific growth rate varies with dissolved oxygen concentration definitely the specific growth rate which is the unit or ug uh, definitely varies with dissolved oxygen concentration so the constant uh, oxygen concentration plays a very important role in microbial growth so if the concentration is less uh, it causes difficulty in transfer and all of the stuff which I'll be telling right now. So second point we see is that uh, below are critical concentration, growth or respiration approaches are first order 
rate dependence on dissolved oxygen concentration. So below critical concentration, uh, the growth or the growth of the cells or respiration approaches the first order rate dependence on dissolved oxygen concentration. But below of critical temperature, it may survive to some extent, but not very much. So also the third point we see is that above critical oxygen temperature, the growth phase growth rate uh, becomes independent of the dissolved oxygen concentration because uh, when enough oxygen is present in the environment it does not uh, really depend on the oxygen content uh, when, uh, and also when the critical concentration is below the optimum then it has to highly depend on the oxygen concentration so without oxygen concentration it cannot survive and also when there is a, a presence of oxygen abundance it does not directly depend on oxygen that time. Also, medium components which can be glucose and ammonia becomes growth extent limiting. So these are some of the nutrient or the uh, uh, nutrient components, medium or nutrient components which can be glucose and ammonia becomes growth extent limiting. So this also plays an important factor with dissolved oxygen. So there can be uh, cases like if there is presence of oxygen above the critical, so there is oxygen present in abundance, but there is less of medium component like glucose or ammonium. So the cells cannot survive due, due to scarcity of medium or scarcity of nutrient. So without nutrient, cells cannot grow. Also, and it is same vice versa. So also the, uh, one of the examples that I've got is the azobacter vernalandi. So, uh, whereas the where in which we see that dissolved oxygen level is 0.05 mg per liter, the growth rate is 50% of the maximum, even glucose is present in large amount. So, the due to less oxygen, uh, this, is the sec uh, this is the case that I told you, in this case, the oxygen is less, but the glucose is present in abundance. And also we see DO, uh, dissolved oxygen is 0.05, the growth rate will cease when glucose is consumed, definitely. Uh, even more growth rate will uh, cease down when the glucose gets exhausted. So this is this, and there is one more graph, which is the last part of this video. And I we'll, uh, will continue for, uh, from here on in the next video, which says that uh, this is the graph of A, Vinalandia, this is the E. coli. So here we have growth rate dependence on dissolved oxygen. Uh, one is azobacter and one is E. coli. So the azobacter is a strictly aerobic organism whereas E. coli is a facultative anaerobe. So this is a aerobic bacteria so definitely uh, azobacter needs oxygen at least it needs oxygen every time for growth along with nutrients whereas E. coli can survive at lower oxygen levels but nutrient supply must be must. Uh, nutrient supply is should be must for both but E. coli may survive without the without proper supply of oxygen as well. Uh, it may survive at critical oxygen levels due to its nature of facultative anaerobes. At about 70% of anaerobic is limited. So let's just keep this video till here and I'll be continuing from here on in my next video. If you like the video, please share, subscribe and like the video. And uh, thank you for watching.